Hey everybody, welcome to part two of this tutorial. Um, so I've already um, set up the UI action sheet in the first portion of this tutorial, but I just noticed that um, I accidentally created it in the wrong method. So if we create, an, create it in the view did load method, as soon as this view controller loads, it's going to display this action sheet. And that's not quite what we want. So what we want to do is move this code. So I'm going to select it, do a command X to cut it, and we actually want to implement it at this method. Now, the reason we want to do it here, of course, is because if you remember, our view controller uh, has, or, or, or sort of our UI here has a button, and this button is in fact tied to our show um, UI action sheet method. And really, what we want to do is we want the user to tap this button and then have the action sheet show up. So that's why we want to be able to uh, display it here. So we've got it in the right place now. Next, what we want to do is we want to be able to do different things based on which of the buttons the user has selected within the action sheet. Um, and before we implement that, let's go ahead and just run this application so you can see that it's working as expected and that the action sheet is in fact getting displayed. So let's give this a second to compile and run the app application in our simulator. So it should be coming up uh, just about any second now. And uh, let's see here, build succeeded. And here it goes. So here's our application. And again, we get our standard, we've got our two text label fields. And if I hit the go button, here comes our action sheet. So we know this portion is working as expected. So I'm going to stop running this application so we can continue with our implementation. Jump back to our view controllers implementation file and now let's implement some code within this particular method which is if you remember part of our UI action sheet delegate protocol. Right so once again if we take a look at the method signature you'll notice that there's two parameters that are getting passed. One is the action sheet itself and the other is the button index. So we can make use of this particular button index value to determine exactly which of the buttons the user tapped on. And the button index usually goes from zero and goes up from that point. So what we will do here is we'll implement a switch. So we'll just use a switch statement to jump between those values. So we can just say switch button index and we can come down here and say case zero because that would be the first button. And then we may want to implement some code here that relates to that. Now I will have multiple lines of code so I actually do want to put uh, some brackets in place so we can uh, do that like we'd like to and I will come down here and do a couple different things. So case zero. So if you remember, let's pull up our simulator real quick and pull up our UI action sheet app and if I hit go, if you remember, the first option here is add, second is subtract, and then third is clear. So let's, let's go ahead and implement that accordingly. So if the user taps the first button, which would be case zero, we want to sum up the values that they've entered in the, um, the two text fields. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's sum our values. Now, we want to be able to sum the integer value of whatever is we want to be able to sum the integer values that are input into our text label. So the way we do that is let's go ahead and create an NS integer and we'll call it sum and we will set that to be num1.text which is essentially the text property of our UI text field called num1 and we need to call a method on it to get its integer value because we can't simply say num1.text because that's a string. So what we would say is integer value and then we would add that to num2.text and get its integer value and set that up so that we can get both of those together. Now of course I get a warning and that's simply because I have not used this just yet. All right. Now what we want to do is we'll want to display the sum itself. So maybe give myself a couple more lines of room. So we'll display the sum. And we can do that by creating an NS string. We'll call that string added value. And then we use a method called NS string string with format. And you'll notice that it takes a parameter which is also an NS string and we can just say 
at, and then we use something called a format specifier. So we'll do a percent %i, which is the format specifier for integers. And we will pass in the value sum, which, as you remember, is an ns integer. We can then also display, if you remember, we have a text label called result. And we can say result.text is now equal to added value. So that causes the sum, the add value um, string to be set to the text uh, result.text text property. And essentially what we're doing is we're adding the two values together and displaying that there. And we may also want to, of course, at the same time display a message. So we are, in this case, adding the two values together. So if you remember, in our viewcontroller.nib file, we actually have two labels. This one was to display a message, and I wanted to be able to change this based on what action the user was taking within the UI action sheet. If they were summing him, I want to maybe display a message that says sum is. If they were subtracting him, I want to display a message that says difference is. So we can customize that message, and that's exactly what we're doing here. So we'll display a message here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set, remember I have a um, um, UI label called message, and I'm going to set its text property to be sum is. So in this case, we're adding the two values together, so that's what we want. Great, so that's really all we need to do for that particular case. Now, because the code is going to be fairly simple, or, or sorry, fairly similar for the other cases, what I'm going to do is going to select all of this, do Command C, come down here and define a new case. Um, of course, I'll immediately get an error because this is case redeclaration. We are using the same case twice. I just need to change that to case one. I want to change this value um, also customize some of these variables because we're going to be just sort of doing a little bit uh, of a different operation. So we'll call this one difference. We will subtract these two values and we will display the difference. Right? So we want to, what do we want to call this? We'll call this n string um, and sort of added value. Let's maybe call it sub value, which is subtracted value. And string with format. Of course, this will throw an error now because we also need to change this name. So this is now difference. Because remember, we changed this value here. It was called sum. This is now called difference. And then the result.text should be also updated to say sub value. And we probably want to change the message here. So we'll just change this in a string to say difference is. And we should be good to go there. Okay, so that's case zero, case one. We have one more case that we want to implement, and that is the fact that the user also should have the ability to um, clear both of the text fields. So let's go ahead and do just that. So we'll we'll change this so that the user can clear both of those values. Um, so in this case, what we will do is we'll set num1 dot text to just an empty string set num2 dot text to be whoop, if I can type here an empty string will set the message value to be empty as well same exact process and uh, what do we call that particular uh, the other thing is result dot text can also be set to be empty. Now, I also have a default case and I don't have anything in there. I could technically just leave this as is, but you know, I don't really have to implement a default case, so I will just go ahead and remove that, command s to save, and we are good to go here. All right, so let's test out this application and see what we can do within uh, the app itself at this point. So give it a couple seconds and it should come up in the simulator any second now. Uh, let's see if I can hope that it's on its way. Seems to be taking an inordinate amount of time. Okay, and I sometimes have this issue with the new version of Xcode. Xcode will essentially crash, and I have to sometimes restart it. So hopefully it won't be the same in this case. And okay, here it comes. So 
just had an issue earlier. All right, very good. So now again, we see we've got num1, num2. If I tap into this row, I get a numeric keypad. And you remember we set that in the first part of this tutorial uh, by setting that particular keyboard value within the nib file. And I can go ahead and say 25. And let's also enter 25 maybe here. Hit go. That gives me the UI action sheet. I can now hit add and I get a sum is 50 value. And I could also come down here and let's say hit go again, hit subtract, and now it says the difference is zero. Very good. Now I can also hit go again, hit clear, and that should, in theory, set everything to an empty string. But let's see why that's not working. Okay, so it's not clearing that. Let's try it one more time. All right, so let's look and see exactly what might have gone wrong. Um, Let's jump back into our values here and let's see alright so we're setting the num1.txt to be a empty string second one third one and that should really work oh I see what the problem is we've defined a case 3 which doesn't really exist because we really should have defined it as case 2 so simple little error on my part command s to save let's run this application one more time and this time I promise you the uh, clear option will work as expected. So let's type in some values, 25, 35, hit go, and hit add, we get the value of 60, hit go, hit subtract, we get the difference is negative 10, hit go, clear, and all of these values get cleared. Great. So that's really all we wanted to illustrate as in terms of how we might work with a UI action sheet, but um, one of the things I can end this tutorial on is, of course, notice that we still have a particular issue. The fact is, we have no way at this point of dismissing this keyboard. So, even though I've gone through and added the two values or whatever, I have no way of dismissing this keyboard. Now, that's an easy fix. We can actually um, set that up pretty easily. Uh, so, let's stop running this application and we can now implement. Um, um, what you call a, a method that would allow us to do exactly that. Okay, so the way we do that is we would come down to our implementation file and maybe we will implement a method called dismiss keyboard. All right, so let's do that real quick. And the way we can do that is, let's see here, come down to, do we need to implement anything here? No, nope. we can just come down here. And let me go through and make sure I've got the brackets correctly set up. There we go. Okay. Um, so we want to dismiss the keyboard. Let's see. We want to create a method to dismiss that. Oh, before we jump into that, let's actually come in here because here's how we would want to do it. Uh, the easiest there's there's a couple different ways to dismiss the keyboard, and the easiest way to actually do it would be to implement a giant invisible button. So let's do, do it using that method. So what we'll do is we'll drag a round rec button onto our view. And I'm going to stretch this out so it essentially takes up the entire area. Okay. All right, with that selected, I'm going to go up to here within the utilities inspect or the attributes inspector, and I'm going to change this button's type to custom, which will essentially make it invisible. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this particular column here because this shows me a list of all the buttons that are there. And I see that this particular button is currently in the foreground, which is it's the first item that's um, visible on screen. And I'm going to just move that to the back by just dragging it this way and now what happens is this is the last interface item that's really layered on this particular view with that done what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the assistant editor and I'm going to drag a IB action down here and we want to change this to I to action actually it looks like I accidentally selected the wrong thing hit cancel so let's let's try this again I'm gonna drag a connection here See why this is giving me any so much grief. Let's go back here. What did I do? All right, so I've got my button here, which is here. Let me try blowing this away one more time. 
So I deleted it just because it was giving me some issues. I'm going to drag it one more time. Let's see why it was causing so many problems. Uh, so set that up. Let's pull up the assistant editor. Right click and drag a connection here. We want to set this as an action. There we go. This time it seems to work. Um, Xcode can be a little funky sometimes, especially with this new version. So we want to call this method dismiss keyboard, something as simple as that. Hit connect. And then I'm going to go back to my standard editor. And um, if you remember earlier, one of the things we had done is we wanted to set this to be custom. So let's go ahead and do that. That makes it invisible. And we also want to send this all the way to the back. We want this to be sort of the the last item that's there. So that should take care of that. Okay, command S to save. Let's now jump back. We can we don't need this column anymore. Jump back into our implementation file, and there should be a method uh, body here that we can now do some work in. Okay, so in here is. Uh, some code that we want to put in will be to essentially resign the first responder and I'm not really going to get into um, why you are doing a resign first responder on this particular um, uh, in this particular method um, all I'm going to say is if you've never worked with the keyboard before you may want to take a look at my tutorial on how you can dismiss the keyboard um, and what what the different options are to do just that so in this case like I said we're gonna use the giant invisible button option and we're gonna tie it to this particular action and we're gonna put in some code that says if um, what did we call our text field say num1 is the first responder then we want it to resign the first responder so we'll just say something like num1 resign first responder minus to save and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this one more time and this time I'm gonna say if num2 is the first responder then I want num2 to resign the first responder so command s to save let's run this and this time you're gonna find that we have the ability to dismiss the keyboard just fine so if I tap in here the keyboard comes up if I type out of here I'm essentially tapping on that giant invisible button and you notice that everything comes up as is now there's a there's some text here called button that's no problem we can fix that as well really all we have to do is jump into our view controllers nip file and I select um, this particular text or just come in here and delete that and we get a clear button command R let's run it one more time so you can see it and notice that there's no more text I once again tap into that row keyboard comes up I tap out of it and it goes away so that's how you can implement a UI action sheet and uh, you've also seen an example of how you can dismiss the keyboard we've looked at how you can get the integer value from a UI text field and I hope this is of some help uh, the action sheets are very popular objects to implement within a lot of different applications so thanks for watching